Come with me, toy fans. It's not an understatement to say that Kenner's original Star Wars toy line revolutionised the way that young children played with action figures. And while Kenner were not the first toy company to introduce the three and three quarter inch action figure scale, they were the first to perfect the concept and to develop the Star Wars toy line into a fully realised range of products. The true genius behind the pairing of Star Wars and the three and three quarter inch scale is that it provided children with a vast assortment of interesting space vehicles for their minifigures to interact with. From 1978 through to the end of the line in 1985, Kenner produced a wide variety of Star Wars vehicles in differing sizes, which could be sold at various different price points, with everything from one-man fighters to massive spaceships being included in the line. Many of these vehicles came with exciting design features, giving the products much added play value. And today we want to pay homage to the original Kenner Star Wars line by counting down our top 10 best vintage Star Wars vehicles. Hello Star Wars fans, my name is Tony and welcome back to the Analog Toys YouTube channel. And kicking us off in the number 10 slot is the Scout Walker. The Imperial Scout Walker appeared for little more than a split second in The Empire Strikes Back, but Kenner still decided to make a toy out of it, and a very cool toy it turned out to be. First released in an Empire Strikes Back box, but later reissued in a Return of the Jedi box, Kenner's Scout Walker toy is a brilliant example of high quality toy engineering. The most impressive play feature on the Scout Walker is the push button walking function, whereby a child could operate the spring loaded button located behind the head of the walker and the legs would move up and down. And this feature gave me hours of fun when I was a child. So that the Scout Walker could also stand, Kenner designed a locking mechanism where a child could press the button halfway down, then engage the locking lever so the legs remained motionless. The Scout Walker also includes elevating chin guns, side mounted laser cannons that feature a clicking sound when rotated, and a single turret gun in front of the driver's hatch. The head of the Scout Walker also rotates, making this toy appear less like a vehicle and more like a robot, but it definitely is a vehicle, and the driver's cockpit can be accessed via a large hinge canopy. Overall, this is an excellent toy that brilliantly displays the clever engineering that Kenner was capable of back in the early 1980s. Taking the number nine slot on the list is Boba Fett's Slave One. The Slave One is Boba Fett's personal warship, and with the galaxy's deadliest bounty hunter at the controls, this distinctive craft is the last thing a fugitive wants to see on their scanners. Now I'll bet many of you thought that the Slave One would rank a little bit higher on this list, and while Boba Fett's main ride is iconic, this isn't a list of the most iconic Star Wars vehicles. Released in 1981 as part of the Empire Strikes Back range of Star Wars toys, the Slave One has several play features including rotating tail guns and gravity operated wings that can be locked into position by using a trigger which is incorporated into a handle positioned on the underbelly of the ship. This handle is a very clever design feature, allowing children to hold the Slave One upright when it's in flight mode. In order to access the main cargo bay of the ship, Kenner designed a removable panel and rear loading ramp so that Boba Fett can load Han Solo frozen in carbonite into the belly of the Slave One. And this carbonite block is a neat little accessory, even if it is a bit undersized. Finally, we have the pilot's chair, which features a plastic clip to hold Boba Fett in position and a ratchet system is used to securely locate the pilot in flight mode. Overall, this is a great toy that benefits from not having any electronic features, which was a feature on many other Star Wars vehicles, but always relied on your parents being able to continually purchase new batteries. And by avoiding these electronic gimmicks, I believe Kenner's designers were able to use their tooling funds on the Slave One to develop a toy that is jam-packed with play value. Number eight on the list of the best vintage Star Wars vehicles is the Rebel Troop Transport. Sometimes referred to as a flying pickle, the Rebel Troop Transport is the ship that the Rebel Alliance used to flee the ice planet Hoth when they came under Imperial attack. And while the Troop Transport may not be the most visually dynamic Star Wars spacecraft, the toy interpretation of this vehicle was packed with immense value for money. The front hatch can be removed to access the pilot's cockpit, and the back hatch also comes off, exposing the vehicle's rear-facing gunnery position. The Rebel Troop Transport also doubles as an action figure carrying case, and the entire top half of the ship can be removed to provide access to the crew chamber. 
being advertised as capable of carrying up to 42 action figures. The action figure carrying tray can be easily lifted out, exposing some interesting detail that is printed on the cardboard underneath. And this area also features a secret escape hatch. The gunnery position can also be removed to become a ground defence system that the Rebels can use to fight off attacking snowtroopers. This is an unusual toy, even for Star Wars, and I think it's a real shame that since 1984, neither Kenner nor Hasbro has ever attempted to re-release it. Coming in at number 7 is Darth Vader's TIE Fighter. For the Star Wars toy line, Kenner offered several different TIE Fighters, including the original white version, the Battle Damage Blue version, which is the only one I own, and the quite impressive TIE Interceptor. But the best of the bunch is Darth Vader's TIE Fighter, and since I don't possess this toy, Michael French from Retro Blasting has very kindly filmed this footage for us to enjoy. So why is Darth Vader's TIE Fighter the best? Well, I may be biased here since this was the only one I owned when I was a child, but I've always believed this to be the best version of the Empire's formidable one-man fighter. Including a battery-powered electronic light and sound feature, this toy also has an opening cockpit canopy so that Darth Vader can access his vehicle, although Vader's cape and height make him an absolute bitch to fit inside the cockpit easily. And just like all the other TIE Fighter toys, the solar panel wings can be ejected to simulate battle damage. In my opinion, the Darth Vader TIE Fighter is quintessential Star Wars and truly worthy of its position on this list. Coming in at number 6 on our list is the Y-Wing Fighter from Return of the Jedi. Although this Rebel Fighter did appear in the first Star Wars film, Kenner did not produce the toy version of the Y-Wing until the Return of the Jedi line, likely due to the vehicle's more prominent role in that film. This is another toy missing from my collection, so once again this footage has been very kindly provided by Retro Blasting. The Y-Wing toy had one of the best electronic features ever designed by Kenner, which caused both a laser-like whine and a rotating motion of the twin barrel cannon that sat atop the cockpit. A really cool feature in my opinion. The Y-Wing is also fairly large and incredibly well detailed. A single pilot can sit in the cockpit and there is a recess behind the cockpit where a droid can be situated. The Y-Wing features retractable landing gear and a bomb, which could be dropped from the fighter at the touch of a button. A very popular but hard to find complete vehicle, the Y-Wing has become increasingly desirable over the years, which is why it is number two on my personal Star Wars wants list, sitting just behind the Darth Vader TIE Fighter. The Force is back. The Rebels won't tire till they see the last of the Empire, and Kenner's there with Star Wars Return of the Jedi Collection. I'm off to rescue R2-D2. Y-Wing oh, Fighter, you have to put it together. Yeah. Batteries not included. Action figures each sold separately. Activate laser cannon. Ready, aim. On target. Luke Skywalker to base work. Coming in. Y-Wing Fighter. Action figures sold separately from Kenner's Star Wars Return of the Jedi Collection. Taking the number five slot is the smallest vehicle on the list, the speeder bike. The Imperial speeder bike is inspired by one of the most exciting scenes in the Return of the Jedi movie, the thrilling chase through the forest of Endor. And while this may be a small vehicle, it was big on play value. The speeder bike features a pivoting laser underneath the main chassis and spring-loaded rear legs, which have been brilliantly engineered to incorporate movable flaps that are easily lost. The biker scout sits securely in position thanks to a spring-loaded T-bar clamp that runs across his thighs, pulling him tightly into the seat. The best play feature of this toy, though, is possibly the most fun feature of any Star Wars vehicle ever designed. By pressing the button on the back of the bike, which is shaped like the biker scout's bedroll, a child can activate the toy's blow-apart feature, enabling them to create exciting crash scenes and explosions. Packed with authentic detail, the speeder bike represents Kenner at the height of their design powers, and if you were a child who was into Star Wars, you definitely loved this toy. Coming in at number four is the Rebels' one-man fighter, the X-Wing. Easily one of the most popular toys in the vintage Star Wars range, the X-Wing is the legendary Rebel Alliance fighter craft that Luke Skywalker was piloting when he blew up the first Death Star. Technically, Kenner produced two versions of the X-Wing, the original white one and the battle damage version, although in my opinion there is a third version which is by far the best, and that is the grey battle damage version without the battle damage stickers. 
This version of the X-Wing also improved upon the first issue white X-Wing by incorporating a tinted canopy and black engine inserts. Kenner's X-Wing also included four removable laser cannons, a retractable landing gear, and by pressing down on R2-D2's dome, a child could move the wings into the X position. A second button returns the wings to the original flight position. The X-Wing is another Kenner toy to include a light and sound feature, and when powered by two AA batteries, the push button activates laser sounds and a red light that is situated in the X-Wing's nose cone. An absolute classic of the vintage Star Wars toy line, if you're not familiar with the X-Wing, then I don't even know why you're watching this video. As we get closer to the top slot, the number three entry is the fearsome Imperial Walker, the all-terrain armoured transport. As children, we were first introduced to the menacing Imperial Walkers during the Hoth battle scene in the Empire Strikes Back movie. And this giant toy replica of the all-terrain armoured transport was every child's dream Christmas gift back in 1981. This massive toy is an incredible 17 and a half inches tall and 22 inches long, and features adjustable limbs and a movable head, which is operated by a handle located inside the main body of the walker. This area can also be accessed via a hinge door that folds down, and there is room inside for up to 10 action figures. The main cockpit is accessed via a large hatch, and there is room inside for two action figures. The head of the walker also features two side-mounted cannons that click into position. But the best play feature is the battery powered chin guns that light up and pulsate when operated. ATATs or 8080s, however you say it is fine, always sell for a premium on the secondary market, especially when they are minty and complete, and it is really worth adding one to your collection if you can afford it, since they make the perfect centerpiece to any vintage Imperial display. Taking the number two slot is the Flying Hamburger. The Millennium Falcon. The Millennium Falcon is a freighter vehicle that is captained by the intergalactic smuggler Han Solo and co piloted by the Wookiee Chewbacca. And Kenner's toy version of this spaceship was a mainstay of the vintage line from 1979 right through to 1983. Due to the sheer size of this toy and factoring in the cleverly designed removable roof section, the Millennium Falcon could double as both a vehicle and a playset. The cockpit has a hinged canopy and could hold two action figures, and the radar dish both swivels and elevates. Three retractable landing gear components have been incorporated into the toy, although the rear two suffer from a weak design that usually struggle to keep the Falcon upright. The entrance ramp folds down so that your action figures can access the main cabin of the spaceship, which is rammed full of features, including the famous gaming table, a smuggling compartment for our heroes to hide in, the Jedi training ball, which is always missing these days, and finally the gunner's chair that could be rotated and also operated the Falcon's main weapon. This spaceship also features a battery operated battle alert sound, which is actually quite annoying, so when I was a child I removed the batteries and used the compartment as an additional smuggling hold. The Millennium Falcon is the flagship vehicle of the entire Kenner Star Wars fleet, and no vintage Star Wars collection can ever be considered truly complete without it. piece of junk. Before we reveal our top pick, here is what we consider to be the worst vintage Star Wars vehicle ever made, the Cloud Car. The vintage Star Destroyer toy almost got chosen for the worst vintage Star Wars vehicle because that toy is very silly, but it does have enough redeeming features to save it, so I was forced to go with the Cloud Car. Any way you look at it, this is a boring toy with less play value than many of the Star Wars mini rigs, and right now I can think of only one use for it. If Bethspin ever suffers from a coronavirus outbreak, at least the cloud car pilots are set up for social distancing. And so coming in at number one is the all-time greatest vintage Star Wars vehicle ever made, the Snowspeeder. The Rebel Armoured Snowspeeder flew in defence of the secret Rebel base located on the ice planet Hoth, and this small two-man fighter was used by Luke Skywalker to take down one of the Empire's terrifying Imperial Walkers in a true David and Goliath style battle in the snow. Yeah. 
While the scaled down versions of many of Kenner's toy vehicles were undersized, the Snow Speeder is actually a tiny bit oversized, and I just love its design. This vehicle's hinge canopy opens up and holds two figures back to back. Although it's a shame we always had to use two Luke figures in X-Wing outfits, since Kenner never gave us a DAC figure. The forward facing figure pilots the Snow Speeder, while the rear facing character operates the harpoon gun. However, if you're seeking out this toy today, please note that the small harpoon accessory is frequently missing. The Snow Speeder also includes a flip down front landing gear, but the best feature is the twin light up laser cannons that have a battle sound powered by two C size batteries. Kenner's rendition of the Rebel Snow Speeder is a fantastic toy that features screen accurate detail and immense play value making it truly worthy of the number one slot on this list. Central Station 5-7, we're on our way. So that's our top 10 best vintage Star Wars vehicles. Did you agree with our list? Please leave us a comment in the section below. And if you'd like to support the channel further, then head over to our Patreon page. I'm Tony from Analog Toys. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.